So let's talk Mario 64. Of course, a very good game, obviously, but if you wanted to play it nowadays, what is the best way to go about doing that? Well, for starters, you could try to hunt down a physical copy of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, I suppose, but that's probably gonna be very expensive and not exactly ideal. You could get it on the Wii U eShop while well, that's still available, but that option's not gonna last for much longer. You can play it on Nintendo Switch Online if you want to pay for the N64 games, but personally, I'm not really a fan of subscription-based gaming. Like, I would rather own the game myself, so to me, that's not really that much of an option. And then aside from that, your only other choice is to hunt down an original N64 cartridge. None of these are particularly ideal, obviously, but also more importantly than just how acquirable they are, these versions of Mario 64 are, for the most part, very faithful to the original game released on N64, which I'm sure many people will see as a good thing, but personally, I am not really in love with that because, I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. Mario 64 has a lot of problems. The controls can be very finicky a lot of the time. It has, like, the worst camera I've ever used in my entire life in a video game. It has a really short draw distance, making it so that, like, coins and stuff appear, like, five feet in front of you, making getting the 100 coin star a pain in the ass in most levels. There's also the fact that, you know, structure-wise, the game boots you out of the level every time you collect a star for no real reason. Among many other things, Mario 64 definitely has its issues. But that is where the version that I'm playing here comes into play, Mario 64 Plus. For those that are unaware, let's rewind a little bit. So a few years ago, Mario 64 received a decompilation made by fans, which essentially just gave it a native PC port, which is really cool. But then even cooler than that is that decompilation was taken and used to create this version of the game here, Mario 64 Plus. And this game comes with a giant menu of a ton of options and fixes and changes that you can apply to the game to tweak it to your liking. If you don't want to mess with any of this stuff, then you could just play normal-ass Mario 64, but at a higher resolution and frame rate and with widescreen if you wanted. But if you want, you can also change up a lot of the things to potentially improve Mario 64 if you feel like it. You can make the controls a lot tighter and more precise. You can give the game a fully manually controllable analog camera like a modern game would have. You can eliminate the draw distance so that everything is always rendered at all distances. And probably biggest of all, you can make it so that when you collect a star, the game asks you if you want to stay in the level and you can just keep on going. And for me, these are such massive, huge improvements to Mario 64 that I consider this version of the game to be absolutely essential to getting the most out of this game. After playing so much of 64 Plus, I couldn't even imagine going back to the original game and its god-awful camera. And I just wanted to highlight this version of the game because a lot of people probably don't know about it, and it's really cool, and it is absolutely my recommended way to play Mario 64 from now on. And I should get in here before a million people start typing in the comments, WHAT ABOUT RENDER 96? Look, Render 96 is a very cool project, but personally, I'm not really interested in it. I think it makes the game incredibly ugly. I think that the original low-poly look of the game is much better than the horrible look of the 3D renders of the time back then. No offense to the people making the project, they're just trying to faithfully recreate the pre-rendered art of that time, which that is what I think looked really bad. So I'm just generally not really interested in Render 96, and it is missing a couple of the really nice features that Mario 64 Plus has, like the ability to stay in levels. So for me, 64 Plus is the way to go. Now, switching over to Mario Sunshine, if you wanted to play this game nowadays, then your options are even more slim, because all you can do is play it in 3D All-Stars, or you have to track down an original GameCube copy of the game. And neither of those are particularly ideal, especially considering that 3D All-Stars couldn't even bother to get the game up to 60 FPS. Like, come on, are you fucking kidding me? Meanwhile, if you play the game on Dolphin, then you have the option to hack the game, and boom, there you go. Widescreen, 60 FPS, all the good stuff you would want. 
If you wanted to play an authentic version of Mario Sunshine with these kinds of improvements, then this is the way to go. Though there are a couple of issues that sometimes happen when you play Mario Sunshine on Dolphin with these hacks. For one, you will sometimes get these stars that appear in the HUD, as you can see here, and that's just there. I don't exactly know what causes it, but it pretty much will always happen eventually while playing. And that is very annoying, but thankfully there is a fix for this that you can download and apply to the game, so that's not an issue. Oh yeah, and another problem when playing on Dolphin is that the goop is going to be a little bit blocky. There is a way to fix this issue, but it also involves removing the heat haze effect on the game, which personally I think is more important, so the goop is going to be a little bit blocky. It's not really that big of a deal if you ask me. The other problem that you sometimes run into playing the game on Dolphin like this is that sometimes the music just will not play when loading certain levels. Not really a huge issue, you can fix this by just exiting the level and re-entering it, and usually that'll just get the music back. But, you know, sometimes it does happen and that kind of sucks. But I personally find it's very worth it to put up with that for the ability to play the game at 60 FPS and all that. And it especially becomes even more worthwhile when you start playing Super Mario Sunburn. This is a mod for Mario Sunshine that does a lot of similar things to what 64 Plus does for that game. However, because this is a mod that has to run on the original game, either through the actual GameCube or an emulator, it's not nearly as robust as Mario 64 Plus is, and it's not configurable. It just is what it is, and you have to take everything that it does to the game. Fortunately, though, I don't really see that as much of a problem, because for the most part, Mario Sunburn just dramatically improves a lot of things about Mario Sunshine. So, first of all, this is gonna seem like a minor point, but it's actually a really big deal. You can skip the cutscenes, hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Anyone that's a big fan of Mario Sunshine knows that starting up a new run of this game is a pain in the ass, because you have to sit through minutes upon minutes of unskippable cutscenes that you've already seen before and aren't really that great in the first place anyway. So already, great first impression, but then Mario Sunburn does much more than that. For one, it adds the long jump to the game, so that's another move in your toolbox of things you can do. But then far more critically, it makes it so that once again, you are not booted out of the level once you collect a Shine Sprite. And in addition to this, they have combined many different versions of the levels together, making it so you can collect multiple Shines at once without having to reload the level. That is really great and fixes one of the structural issues with Mario Sunshine that you can only really do the one Shine at a time that you have selected. Now it's a bit more like Mario 64 in that way, which I think is really nice. And additionally, with this whole thing, they have also changed the completion requirement for the game, because originally in Mario Sunshine, for whatever reason, they made it so that you had to complete Mission 7 on every single one of the levels in order to unlock the last level and beat the game. Which meant that actually collecting Shine Sprites was completely worthless towards just beating the game. Obviously, you could just do it for 100% completion if you wanted to, but it doesn't make any sense considering every other Mario game is based on how many stars you get. And Mario Sunburn can be made to work like that, where now you unlock the final level once you get 70 Shine Sprites, giving you way more wiggle room and freedom in terms of how you want to go about playing the game, which is awesome, and it's probably how the game just should have been initially anyway. That said, unfortunately you can't collect every single shine in one go on the levels because there are a couple of missions that do require you to specifically load that mission because they modify the level design in such a way where it wouldn't really gel with the other versions of the levels so they weren't really able to all be mashed together into one version, but I don't really think that's that much of an issue. You can jump in the level and collect like four or five shine sprites, and then you just have two or three more that you just have to pop in and out real quick to get them. Not really that much of an issue, and actually they've made it so that anytime you enter like a sub area, like a secret level or a boss fight or whatever, they've now added these pipes that allow you to just go right back to the mission select of the level. So you don't even have to go through the whole process of going back to Delfino Plaza, you can just go right here and then just immediately select the next mission to make that shine gettable. So this really smooths out the process of playing Mario Sunshine and makes it a lot faster and a lot more intuitive and a lot more like Mario 64, but with the addition to collect multiple shines all at once, just like 64+, which is great. 
But then Sunburn goes even further beyond that still, because it also adds a whole bunch of new coins all over the levels, making getting the 100 coin shines way less annoying. It's actually now possible to get the 100 coin shine on every single mission of every single level, which is awesome. Also, they've made it so that stupid fucking text box that appears every time you collect a blue coin that asks you to save, that doesn't show up anymore, which just improves the pacing of the game so much. You have no idea. Additionally, one feature that I'm not particularly crazy about, but is kind of cool, is they have kind of tried to make the game a bit open-world-ish, as they describe it. Where now, if you want to go to a different level, you don't have to go back to Delfino Plaza and then go over to the level and all that. Because Mario Sunshine, you can see the other levels from the level you're currently at, you can just go toward that level and you'll just go straight to the level select for that world. For example, I'm here in Bianco Hills and down below this cliff you can just see Rico Harbor there. If I want to go to Rico Harbor, I just jump down and boom, here I am now. Pretty neat little feature, though it does make it so that you no longer have to unlock the levels. You can just go from any level to any level at any time, which is a little bit weird and definitely fucks around with the structure and pacing of Sunshine. But if you want, you could just not use this feature and still play it like the normal game, which is what I opt to do. So yeah, that's a bit of a quick overview of Super Mario Sunburn. Very cool version of Sunshine that does a lot to fix the game up and improve it, and kind of make it how it always should have been in the first place. This might not be everyone's cup of tea because of how much it does modify the original game in various ways, but personally, I think it is very, very cool. As someone that's already played the vanilla Sunshine like a billion times, I kind of just see this as a new, fresh way to play the game that makes everything a lot smoother and a lot more straightforward. So yeah, cool stuff between these two versions of these games. If you wanted to play Mario 64 or Mario Sunshine, I would definitely recommend at least giving these a look and trying them out. And you know what? While we're here, why don't we do a bonus one? Why don't we talk about Mario 64 for the DS? I certainly wouldn't recommend Mario 64 DS as a replacement over the original Mario 64, especially when comparing it to Plus. But Mario 64 DS does have a lot of cool extra stuff added to the game that's not in the original Mario 64 that's definitely worth playing. However, the big issue with Mario 64 DS is the controls, because as it's a DS game, the game does not normally have analog control, you have to use the D-pad which really hurts the playability of the game. It really makes it control kind of like shit. However, thankfully, there has also been a really cool community project made for this game as well, where you can play Mario 64 DS with analog controls, and this makes the game way more playable and way better. I'll have links in the description below for all of this stuff for you to go check out. Uh, yeah, definitely play these versions of these games. They're really cool. If you followed me for a while, then you know that I am definitely a big fan of community projects that enhance classic games, and it's great to see these games that definitely had problems and needed fixing up, getting those fixes and being made much better than they were. To me, this is kind of like helping these games realize their full potential that they weren't really able to due to technical limitations of the time. Uh, so yeah, fan versions of 3D Mario games, big thumbs up for me, go check them out. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, I'll see you next time.